Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Fireman Dan here. Welcome back to another episode of Space Engineers. Last time we went over all the basic building blocks of the game, or most of them anyways. And this time I thought I would go through and give you a rundown on all things power, as you can see behind me. So, up first are nuclear reactors. Small nuclear reactor, large nuclear reactor. The advantages of the reactors are they provide you the most power output possible in a game without going into mods. The downside is, as of several updates ago, uranium no longer spawns on planets unless you use a mod. The only place you can get it is up in space and like asteroids and such. So how do these work? How do, how do you use them? Well, just put them down any way you want. And then the cargo ports on the top, on the, on the front and top, or whatever you want to call it, maybe the side, however you place it. You connect these up via conveyor tubes to the rest of your uh, cargo system. And uranium automatically gets sucked into the reactors. Now you don't have to do that. You don't have to connect them up. Uh, if you want to constantly feed uranium into it by hand, you can do it that way. Or if you're going for a creative build only, these don't use any uranium. So like I'm in a creative world right now, these are running, but there's no uranium in them. Statistics. Small nu nuclear reactor, maximum output is 15 megawatts. If I click on here, maximum output is 15 megawatts. The large reactor is 300 megawatts. So power-wise, 20 small reactors equals one large reactor. Size-wise, this is one by one by one, that is three by three by three. So that's 27 blocks, this is one block. 27 of these can fit inside the space of one large nuclear reactor. Well, if you look at this, you would think, well, it's more economic to use, space-wise, it's more economic to use small nuclear reactors, 27 small reactors over one large reactor. Well, that's technically true, if you're going for a creative build. If you try to block these up in a row, three by three by three, you will never access all the cargo ports for every reactor, especially in the middle. So you cut down this number. If you're going for a creative build, once again, it doesn't matter because you don't need to have supply any uh, uranium to them. If you're going to for a uh, survival world, a survival build, you need to be able to access one of these ports on every actor at all times, whether it's by hand or by the conveyor tubes. So you'll you'll, you'll never block them up right just to get 27 reactors in there. All right, moving on. Up next is the hydrogen engine. The hydrogen engine is, well, exactly what it sounds like. It runs on hydrogen. How does this work? You connect a cargo port to, the, to your conveyor system, and you need either an O2 generator on it or a uh, hydrogen tank. Once again, creative world doesn't need fuel. Survival world does. Over to the statistics. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Loris grid hydrogen engine. Output maximum output is five megawatts. Maximum output is five megawatts. So that would be five. How many times five going to three hundred? You do the math. I didn't. I. And you'll see why in a second. The fuel. It burns at maximum output one thousand liters of hydrogen per second. Uh, that's a lot. And just to show you that's a lot. One kilogram of ice equals 10 liters of, hi of hydrogen. So, using this, the hydrogen engine burns 100 kilograms of ice per second, 6,000 kilograms per minute, 360,000 per hour, 8.6 million ice per day. So if you're using a decent miner to mine ice, and I'm talking eight to hold 80,000 kilograms of ice per load, 
That's 108 mining loads of ice per day to power this. And this information is coming from Wikipedia, so unless they've changed it since the Wikipedia has been uh, put in place, it's accurate. So what does this mean for hydrogen engines? Well, even on the world Triton world, the new Triton world, that's one big ice block of ice. This is not convenient because 108 loads of ice. They have hydrogen balancing mods. There's one called hydrogen rebalance, which I believe it, it, the amount of uh, hydrogen put out by one kilogram of ice is 1.5 times the normal amount. So that'd be what, 15? But still, that's a lot of hydrogen. I would never, ever, ever, ever use this as a main power source, even on a rover. It's great for maybe a backup source if, say, you run out of hydrogen or run out of uranium by mistake, and you gotta th you gotta switch these on just so you can uh, maybe mine some uranium or refine some ra uranium because your reactor's back online. But do not, absolutely, do not count on a hydrogen engine as a power source. And creative world once again since it doesn't burn fuel yeah sure I can see you using it but not in survival next solar panels one solar panel is maximum output is 145 kilowatts and going down to the back of the large reactor 300 megawatts if I did my math right that's 300,000 solar panels to equal one large reactor that is outrageous. So, you could probably use these as a trickle charger to charge the batteries or, or, or to just put them there to maybe a smaller base to, or even help save on your, your uranium cost. But still, that's a lot of solar panels. They are great. They're, they're great as a secondary source, as a backup source, as like a trickle charger, but don't try not to re rely on them continuously. Batteries. Batteries are, well, batteries. One large battery maximum output is 12 megawatts. That's almost equal to a small reactor. The stored power is only 3 megawatts. So 25 batteries equals one large reactor uh, output wise. But if you're running these on full bore, maximum load, they would deplete in 15 minutes. So once again, use them as a secondary source, uh, like a backup when you need them. Um, they could, if you're flying around, say in space or something, they can be there as your, like a, your, an extra oomph for your, for your thrusters. So when you hit your thrusters, it may overload your reactor but if you've got a handful of batteries on, or 20, 30, 40 batteries, or however many you put on your large, your large ship, they can help give your, your extra boost of power needed to supply your thrusters. They work great, they really do. I use batteries a lot. Next, your wind turbines. Count on your wind turbines being your main source of energy on planets until you get reactors online. Maximum output, 425 kilowatts. So 70 turbines equals one large reactor. I know 70 is still a lot. But if you're using these as your main power source to get the reactor, your base is still not gonna be that well built or at least that big or that power hungry. At least I hope. You should always work on getting your reactors online, always. Use these primarily over solar. Small grid. So, small grid large reactor, 14.75 megawatts. Small reactor output, 500 kilowatts. So one large reactor equals 29.5 small reactors, power output, and 27 small reactors fit inside one large reactor. Once again, 
creative. You got to access your ports, same as the, same as the large. So you will never fit 27 reactors in the, in the space of a, of a large reactor unless you're in creative only. If you're in survival world, you got to be able to access the cargo ports. And these ones are even worse because there's only I actually covered it up, but there's only one one place you can access it instead of two. So these are a lot worse for access. Batteries, one large battery, four megawatts, one megawatt stored power. One small battery is 200 kilowatts, and stored power is 50 kilowatts. Small grid has access to small batteries, and only the small grid. Large grid does not. But now what, anyways? 20 small batteries equals one large battery, and 18 small batteries fit in the space of one large battery. And that's power output wise. And 3.7 large batteries equals one large reactor. Battery wise, looking at this, small grid is much better on batteries than large grid is. And I'll show you that over there. The hydrogen engine, uh, same thing as before. Do not rely on hydrogen in survival because well, 10 kilograms of ice per second, six. 600 uh, per minute. Did I type that right? Is it 6,000 or 600? There's, there's one off of there. That's 6,000. Whoa, 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 whoa. So this is 600 per minute, 36,000 per hour, 864,000 ice per day to run this full war. It's not nearly as bad as the large grid, but that's still pretty bad. Especially when you're talking 600 kilograms of ice per minute. Around the backside, lastly, you got small grid solar panels. Once, once uh, solar panel, 36 kilowatts max output. Uh, with the large reactor output, 410 equals solar panels equals one large reactor. Same deal with as over here. Uh, good for a trickle charger and secondary power source, but don't rely on them. Now over this, you would have seen this in the last uh, video I made. This has a single battery powering this ship and thrusters. Small ship stuff batteries work great. Uh, a decent miner that I have, or that I can build, I can put maybe six or eight batteries on it, and I can get, I don't know, 45 minutes of drill time out of it up to an hour of drill time and when you're talking mining flying back and forth depends on how far you go really if you're flying several kilometers you may have to go out there drill a bunch come back and recharge but when you're talking you can get 80,000 to 100,000 120,000 kilograms of ore in a single load that's that's pretty decent but batteries work great to power small ships compared to large grid where batteries are more on the side burner. Great, they work great. I use them regularly. Of course you can use reactors, but they're not required. And one of the things you can actually do with this, if you group your thrusters, all right, so let's come in here. Group your thrusters, your battery or batteries come down on your toolbar down here battery recharge on off thrusters on off and if I were to throw a connector on here let's grab a connector just go ahead and throw that on there I'll throw that on there as well so as I'm flying along, I could come to come to my base, right? Hover my connector over the over the, the port, and press three and switch lock and connect to my base. From air, I can turn press two, turn off my thrusters, press one, turn my battery on the recharge, and now my battery can sit there and recharge while connected connected to the base. So it's very easy to recharge your batteries, very, very convenient way of doing so. 
And you don't even have to do this. If you even throw a simple small reactor on there, right? On here. Put throw some uranium in it. It can be sitting there charging your batteries for you while you go do something else. It, it'll take a lot longer than using your base to charge this, but it's doable. You can even throw a small reactor on here as uh, like an emergency reactor or a jump start kit, if you want to call it that. Leave it off. And if you're out and about somewhere and you notice your power is running low and like, oh crap, I'm about to run out of power, you can land, turn your batteries to recharge and turn on the small reactor and recharge your batteries. You'll be stranded out there for a little bit until you get some juice in them, but, well, it's, just, it's an emergency situation. So depending on how big the ship is, same thing if you throw a solar panel onto it, it can sit there act as a trickle charger as well. That's why I said they're good for trickle chargers. Very great. And I can sit here, turn this to recharge with the solar panel on here, and it'll, it'll slowly recharge my batteries. It'll take longer, once again, than using your base, but it, you can help save you uh, uranium and power resources. Alright, a little tip and trick with solar panels. I just wanted to show you this. Normally, well, let me rephrase that. I plan on doing other videos with different scripts of light, but this one involves power source, so I'm going to go ahead and throw this in here. This is called Izzy's Solar Alignment. If I pull this open, Izzy's Solar Alignment script. What it does is this will make your solar panels or oxygen farms, because remember from the last video, oxygen farms are going to be pointed directly at the sun as well. This will track the sun just like, well, any other solar panel in the real world does. On this specific world, I do not have the sun tracking turned on. I just have it sitting in one place. So when I show you how to do this, it's not going to actually track the sun because, well, the sun is not moving. So let me show you how it's done. So up first, let me go back up here. Build your solar tower. You can build it as fancy as you want. Use your imagination. I was going for basic when I did this. Make your horizontal rotor, right? Technically, that is all you need, and it'll, it'll rotate, but it won't point up and down. If you want to make them a little more efficient, put your vertical rotors on. And you can do this as many times as you want. So I can, I can come up here, right? Oh, well, I'll probably have to go a little higher because of the solar panel. But I come up here and throw another rotor there and another rotor there, and now you got a double, a double layer uh, solar tower. But once you get your tower, your tower done, make a nice little cross or a T whichever you want to call it. On each horizontal beam, you need either a solar panel or an oxygen farm, either one. Back down to the bottom. Put your Izzy's into the uh, program block. So, edit, browse script. Izzy solar alignment script. I'll just double click on it or copy the editor. Okay, and it's in, but if you see this right here, warning, rotor groups not found, solar rotors. So that all the rotors that you put in your solar panel, make a group. Solar rotors, save. Now see, I'm, no batteries found, don't you want to store power? Well, you, not right now, I don't. I just keep saying it's calculating and whatnot. This, I don't think it's going to do anything because the sun rotation is turned off. Sun rotation is turned off. If it was not turned off, this would actually be turning towards the sun and lining up to the sun and tracking the sun. Oh wait, there it goes. What do you know? How about that? So it's, it's moving. 
<laughs> well, there you have it. Let's move it. That's technically all you have to do. If you want an information display, put an LCD down, and in the name you want explanation point ISY for Izzy dash lowercase main. And this comes up. This is just your information screen. Warning, no batteries found, don't you want to store power? So that's saying, hey, throw some batteries on. This is what it's doing, aligning one horizontal rotors. Not actually moving, so. Solar rotors, rotor, rotor, rotor. For whatever reason, the horizontal rotor isn't. Is it? Or is it just going really slow? I think it's just going really slow. Now, statistics. Statistics for two solar panels, efficiency 99.8%. It'll show you your power input. It also shows you your power output for the solar panels. Oxygen farms, uh, I think that's the efficiency as well, 67% efficiency. And it will also show you your time of day where you're at. And I see inaccurate, still calculating. And it shows you your dawn, your dusk, your day, day length time, night length time. There are several things else the script can do. I never use them, but it can. Let me pull up the. Your light. It can turn your lights in your base on and off automatically. You can use gyros as well. Uh, power fallback with this option. You can en enable your reactors or hydrogen engine as a safety fallback if not enough power is available to power all your machines or battery charge gets low. By default, all reactors and hydrogen en engines on the sand grid will be used. If you only want to use specific ones, put their names or, or group in the list. By default, fallback devices are activated on low battery, less than 10% left and on overload more than 90% of the max output used. The overload activation will kick in. If the overload power usage of all batteries, solar panels, and wind turbines exceed the set value, default 90% by max output. You can enable or disable features by setting their values to true or false. You can also change the thresholds of your needs. This is all in the, uh, the guide, which if you go into the main page, you can just click on it right there. So you can automatically save your power sources, your, your, your uranium, your backup hydrogen, automatically recharge your batteries all through the script. If you got interior lights in your base, they will automatically turn your, your base lights on and off if you enable it. Keep in mind, if you don't have no windows on your base or whatever, it, that room will be dark if your lights turn off. But it's there. This is one of my uh, go-to scripts whenever I'm building solar panels. So that's about it. As a recap, reactors first, hydrogen as an emergency backup only, batteries work great, solar panels are trickle chargers, uh, wind turbines are great for starting out on the planets, batteries work great on small grids, the small batteries Oh, but yeah, by the way, the smaller batteries do not hold that much power. But the option is there to use them to save space. And make sure you line your solar panels up with the sun. AZ Solar Alignment Script works excellent for that. Make sure you connect up your cargo ports if you're using Survival World Build. If you're not, then you can just throw anything anywhere you want. And I think that's it. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Space Engineers. And I will see you next time.